Hey guys, this is Killerob speaking and today we are back in automation with the light campaign V3 playthrough with Merano, Freudian supercars and we need to uh, continue our journey and that is with the heavily indebted uh, company that just started to design its first proper GT car. Uh, uh, let's let's hope that works out. <laughs> it is supposedly going to be very, very good at pulling back what it costs. We shall see about that. I certainly need to pull back a few millions here and there. The Verdini is doing really well. The Titos is selling the remaining few cars. This will take a while. And if not, then we shall just scrap them. Um, that's such a shame. <laughs> such a shame. No, no. Uh, also, are they? No, they're not actually still produced. This is just the old value that's not updating. So that's all good. Today, I think, will be more or less a transport episode. We will have to make a facelift for the Verdini, which will be super scary, because that time, that will mean that we have another good set of costs coming in. And it just started production, so maybe if we started start off 62, it might work out. Anyway, from here, we shall uh, start rolling time and see what happens. That's a nice profit, 3.6 million, 4 million. And, oh yeah, this is looking pretty solid. Pretty solid. We are selling plenty of cars, even um, building up a bit of a stock. Not too much though. And our new project, the Dalios, which you are probably already starting to design, is at just a cost of 250,000 roughly, which is like researching a level one, uh, level one upgrade. Level one uh, res tech, tech ball, yes, here, uh, 250 <laughs> per month. Yeah, okay, I, I'd rather get the Dalios out there. Whew, this is a lot better. Now we're at a credit rating of C. This is still climbing, is it? Oh, we even had a bit of um, is there a C plus. Yes, please don't crash. Please don't crash going into the new year. Uh, no, no, we are continuing. We just paid a little bit of tax. And this is a deep hole we have to dig ourselves out of, but this is looking pretty good so far. All right, we are going to start the facelift around there, although I should check out how long it will take to do so. Oh, our credit rating is up to B plus again. Not too bad. But yeah, we are making almost 7 million worth of profit each month. It's massive. That will mean there will be a big tax bill coming. Oh, we're... Oh, shit. Look at that fucking economy crash. Now it's dipping even deeper. We're currently gr growing <laughs> at minus 6.1% per year. Uh, that That is not, not good. It's not good when you are sitting on that much debt. I hope this is turning around reasonably quickly. But, okay, we are making... 8.4 million each month. Already... Oh, A plus credit rating. Holy. Yes. That's good to have in a deep depression. We are almost there. We're ticking over to 1962. Tax bill incoming. Oh, 12 million. Fuck you. But now I do need to start my facelift of the Verdini. All right. Let's activate it. Come on there. Yeah. It's a little nice update. And let's see what we have for it. I'll just head in here. Sport 173, still doing really nicely. Okay, fixtures. Nope. That's for you to design. We still keep this one below 200. Top speed. Oh, this is getting really close, though. <laughs> this is getting really close. Where are we at? I definitely don't want to go beyond that. Um, oh, we should update the engine first. So, uh, do we want to do that right now? Hmm. Yeah, I believe so. Edit engine project. This is, is a little tricky. 
do need a new... Ah, oh, no, we can't do a new facelift. We can reuse, because it's currently in engineering, that facelift. So that means we're going to reuse the old engine, which is fine. I mean, that's, that's not too terrible. It is a very good engine, after all. And it is not our first iteration of that engine either, which sucks in uh, reliability. It has gone through a, a loop of um, improvements. Open diff, still tires potentially can be upgraded. The combined costs still are massive. Why is that? Mm, the brakes need optimization. We need more front brakes. There, that's better. I think we are staying with drums. Just keep it uh, keep it cheap enough. Wow, 42.2 sportiness. And we have 1.4%. Oh, wow. We could go for solid disc and then make them a lot smaller. Reduce the brake fade. And oh, that's, is that much more expensive? It should be. Let's see. Um, okay, let, let's hold the car. And make a proper comparison. So this is the optimal, kind of close to optimal setup with drum brakes. Now let's create a, a somewhat optimal setup with uh, discs. Mm, okay, this doesn't work. Just doesn't work because uh, we can't get enough rotor on here without like making the setup completely not viable. We need the pad type. So we are reverting to the headed car and see what we can do in order to get this one balanced out. This year's car is slower than before. What happened? We could upgrade to luxury AM radio because the price differential is so small. On the other hand, it doesn't seem like they really care for it. Yeah, premium is the sweet spot right now. Let's go for one additional quality. Nowadays, this doesn't make um, the interior heavier as it did before. We changed the progression slightly. I don't want to push it too high though, because that will mean it costs more, and that means that we are more overlapping with our GT segment, even though we only have two seats in this one. Oh yes, come on. Come on, flip over. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's optimized. Let's not make the tires super damn expensive. I'll lower the camber slightly. A nicely optimized car. Not overlapping too much with the segments due to the seat count penalty and everything. I think we're good. So that was this. And now we need a nice update for the convertible version as well. For the convertible, I think it might be worth it to switch this to uh, luxury. And because it is facelift, that should be all right for the engineering as well. Because we are already producing the car anyway, so it's not too much of an opportunity cost to uh, switch to a different set here where you more or less play, uh, pay double. <laughs> Just a test here. Oh, that, well, the hydraulic doesn't even kill it that hard. Oh, that's because the uh, steering switches around and actually benefits it slightly. Uh, yeah, nah, nah, <laughs> no hydraulic. Uh, steering for power steering for this yeah we're turning it around let's have a look at not suspension tuning but fast steering oh yeah that's also on the edge nice this works a solid update I would say this should have uh, or should guarantee the longevity of this and I think in order to get a bit more of the market like oh that is expensive though yeah, we can pull up the uh, the automation level slightly. Let's go to 45. We were at 25. That is a difference of 20 million. But leave the tooling quality in the gutter where it is. 40. Oh yeah, no, this is looking good. Funding down. We don't need that much funding. Yeah, make it cheap. The change in interior to the new type of interior for uh, the convertible is... Uh, what it seems like, the biggest investment, time investment, we are doing change-wise. That leads me to take a second look and maybe upping some quality sliders. How about a bit more drivetrain quality? 
Not the wheels, they become too expensive. Interior quality is already a plus one. And this is the one which is causing the is the biggest vector, so we don't want to make that one longer. But suspension could be a plus two. And body? Let's see how that reacts. Our prestige goes up. Yeah, that can't hurt. And the price is only going up slightly. Alright, so body quality plus two. We have drive tank quality plus two. And suspension quality plus two. Looking good. Let's recheck the engineering. Yeah, that made it slightly longer. Another question I have is if we get any penalties for low... Um, for low safety. You don't seem to be. No, all right. No, the safety rating seems to be all right. So we don't have to add safety uh, bonus points there for, for quality in order to amp that up. The pressure can be reduced. We want to learn a bit about this project as well. Just give them time, lowest costs. Reliability can go up to 50. And I think the tooling can be optimized slightly so that we get up to 60 here. Yeah, that makes it cheaper to build. All right, it should keep it nice and cheap. And we only pay 6.5 million overall in engineering costs for this facelift. Yeah, yeah, that sounds very much viable. Engine is staying the same. And bam! Holy, I, I, I wish this, this were true here. <laughs> Let's put it at um, five years. I'll drop the target shift count to 1.8 and the maximum shift count to 2.1. No change in the engine factory. We're still producing the same old thing and no retooling required there. And now we're ready to sign it off. 26 and 27 months, nicely balanced. Well, almost balanced. And is there anything? Uh, yeah, numbers are looking good. I must be looking really good. Let's sign it off. Ah, oh, look at that. How cute. There's a tiny little engineering project going on. And... Ugh. We still need to dig. We need to keep digging out of this hole. And this massive dis depression won't help. So, uh, yeah. It's just advanced time. The digging is going really well, though. Perfect. We are also getting some um, margin on these sales now. Oh, 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 that was a crash. What happened there? Okay, recovered slightly. Our costs are also going down. It really is depression time, but we are doing well. We are depression hardened. This uh, economy is still growing at minus 6.5% each year. We just paid 20 million in taxes. And another crash in sales. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. It recovered again. Oh, our margins are dropping dead. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Now, now comes the refresh. This is costing us oh, only 3 million a month. <laughs> that could be a lot worse. Well, okay. Now we're not selling anything anymore. That means... Oh, ouch. Ouch. Yeah, that hurts. That is more than just a few million a month. Ow, 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 ow. Come on, come back. Yes, there we go. And sales are excellent. O almost excellent. Yeah. Yes, making a profit again. Five million. Whew. Updated. Updated Verdini can only lead to success. And the economy is slowly recovering. This is looking like a nice upward trend now. Still at minus 2.3%, but uh, that is changing. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Come on. Oh, ouch, ouch, ouch. Overproduction. And now the economy is back to growing again. This is looking strong. This is looking very strong. The taxes won't be nice. I thought we had plenty of costs there too, so it won't be too harsh. 4 million in taxes and we continue digging but before we continue I would have to start a replacement for the Verdini 
And that is something that I would like to do in the next episode. But I think what we can do is have a look at if we can already build a full aluminium engine. If that is the case, then we need to get started on one. An impressive one. And have it ready for the car. Uh, or, well, as, as ready as possible. Let's uh, take, just take a quick look what it could be. So, um, do we have access to something, something proper? V12, aluminium, dual overhead cam, four valve, aluminium. Are you fucking kidding me, Killer Rob? Well, yes, yes I am. Sorry, it needs to be small. Hmm, we could make it a maximum size of 3.5 liters. That is massive. That is huge, but it's lightweight. The head would be weighing 64.6. I mean, this is dual overhead cam, so it's pretty large. Uh, and the block is 53, so yeah, it's, it's just 120 kilos. Uh, well, not, not even that uh, for the engine block and head. It's not too much. Do we want to make it even smaller? We could go for 3.2 liters, 48 valve, <laughs> that thing will rev like crazy. Let's see what it can do. Let's see, let's see, forged steel, uh, nah, fuck, there's no proper forged conrods yet, not the lightweight stuff, which we would need, so let's do a simple one first, cast, this will rev high enough, no worries. And probably something like 60 cam, 65 cam, should rev high. And then we put in mechanical fuel injection. Are you crazy? 62 months just for that. Throttle per cylinder, 72 months. Performance intake. M. That looks high. That's a very, very high engine. And that looks stupid. That looks like not a good idea. <laughs> so yeah, it would have to be throttle per cylinder. But DCOEs. Hmm, six. Holy fuck! No, that is a little too much. And it can run on 91. That means the Fruinians will, once the fuel ban is coming in, 78 or something? They won't be complaining. Optimize the uh, ignition timing to around 5,000 because we are going to rev to the moon. Let's start out with 7.5 and long race, uh, no, not long race, a long tubular. And then we're going for just a baffled muffler. If it weren't too knocking, uh, let's also open up the exhaust slightly and now lower the compression. And how much are we making? 240 horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> revving with cast components, cast internals, we are revving to 7,400. So just one step down and it's perfect. Yeah, the reliability isn't perfect, I would say. But that's to be expected. It's dual overhead cam 4 valve. But why not get started early, right? Should go for dual exhaust. And then about there. 247 horsepower. Yeah, that looks like a winning engine. Let's have a quick listen. Um, that sounds absolutely bonkers. Holy hell, that is something that that needs to be put in a fantastic car. All right, all right. I think this is a nice little taste for what is to come. I'm getting giddy already. All right, I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.